Hey yo, what's up my little coders? Let me show you in this tutorial how to solve the lead code question 605, and for its flowers. We are given one integer array, which represents the flower bed. And this in integer array can consist of only zeros or ones, where one represents the like, um This place is not empty and the flower is already there. And zero represents that this place is empty and maybe potentially we can place a new flower there. And integer n represents, it's like basically it's asking us, can we place an amount of flowers giving this flower bed? And we need to return boolean, whether we can or cannot. And there is one important rule that the flowers cannot be planted in adjacent pods. So if that's the input array, right? They're asking us, can we place one flower? Okay, let's think. This place is already occupied then on this index we cannot place any flowers because like there's another flower on on the website and flowers cannot be planted in adjacent pods however if you go to this index okay everything is fine on the left side everything is fine on the right side it means that like okay we can place it we can place at least one flower here so we are happy to do it and we just return true because yes, it's possible to plant a flower. And in case if we cannot do it, we need to return false. Okay, let's think about the base case. So in which scenario can we return like an answer straight away? We can return the answer straight away if n is equal to zero. So can we place zero flowers? Of course we can. Why not? We just return true in this case. Then let's declare uh, an integer to just keep track, like, what amount of flowers can we actually plant. So let's just call it count. And now let's iterate through the whole flower bed. We are iterating, right? And there's no point to consider the indexes which point to value which is equal to 1, right? So we're only in interested in these zeros. If flower bed of index i is equal to zero, it means that, okay, this is the empty place and potentially we can plant a flower there. But to make sure if we can't plant the flower there or not, again, guys, flowers cannot be planted in adjacent pods. So if you're considering this example again, right? And we reach the first zero value, we need to check the left side and the right side. They both should be equal to zero. We need like two extra conditions. If the value at index i is equal to zero and the value at index i minus one is equal to zero, so the left side, and else the value at index i plus one, so the right side is also equal to zero. In this case, yes, we can do it. We can plant the flower there, so we can increment our counter. And also, we can check if the count now is equal to n, because if we reach this point when the count is equal to n, it means that yes, we can return true straight away, because it means that like we can plant at least n amount of flowers, so we just return true. Or if we're iterating through the whole input array and we will not return true, in this case, after the for loop, we can just return false, which will mean that no, we cannot plant n amount of flowers. But also, <clears throat> think about that. Okay, imagine that, like, basically, we found the first flower, but we need to check the second one, right? If you can plant it with two flowers. There's no point to just, you know, go after that to the next index, because we, we know that, like, the flowers can be planted in adjacent pods, so there's no point to check the next index. We can just jump, like, on the next, next index. We will increment i by 1 anyway, when we will go on the next iteration of the for loop. But if we found the place where we can plant the flower, we can do i++ here as well. So on the next iteration of the for loop, we will in total do like i++2, and just we'll skip the next index, and we'll go to just next, next index right away. Then this is what we need to do to just, you know, avoid unnecessary extra steps and extra checks, because there's no point to check the next um, index once we found that, you know, we already can plant the flower on the current i index. 
So this is, should be enough to pass the first example. Let me run the code. And yeah, it passes. However, imagine that, I don't know, you would have like the following input array, which starts with the zero. And in this case, our program is going to break because, you know, we'll get array index out of bounds exception because we'll start our iteration and the first value at index zero is equal to zero. And, you know, we'll try to check the value on the left side. But, you know, there's nothing on the left side because it's just the beginning of the array. So we are going to get an exception. How can we avoid these cases? We definitely want to have an extra check. If our bet i is equal to zero and else i at the same time is equal to zero, or if this condition applies, uh, Java will not even go to the to do this check and will and will not do i minus one because it's like an, an or statement. In this case, our program will not break and you know it successfully will check because if i is equal to zero, we don't check the left side; we can only just check the right side. So. And also, if we will go to the end of the array, we can face like the similar situation with the end of the array. <laughs> it also controls the array index out of bounds exception, so we can also we should also do the similar thing here. If i is equal to power bet dot length minus one, or power bet i plus one is equal to zero, blah blah blah, then everything is good. We increment the counter, and yeah things like that. So this is just the extra condition which will allow us to pass the other cases as well. Okay, let me run the code. Cool, let's submit guys. Perfect guys, 100%. I hope it makes sense. Thanks for watching guys. Remember, lead code of the day keeps an appointment away, so make sure you practice your lead code skills, challenge your friends to see if they can solve this question or not, and guys, please, in order to support me and my channel, please subscribe to my channel, I will really appreciate that, and I will see you in the next video, guys. Good luck!